Flying, one of man's greatest frontier. You can go halfway around the world in less than a day when you ride this metallic tube in the air going hundreds of miles per hour. But because we can't have nice things, there are rules in place. And we have flight attendants to enforce them. Not only do flight attendants make sure the flight goes smoothly, but they also serve us. In short, they know the goods. And have been keeping them under wraps until now. Here are 10 secrets flight attendants don't want you to know. Before this flight takes off, put up your tray table and take a moment to subscribe to your in-flight entertainment. Me! Toxic water. While most people think it's the air that's nasty, you need to look at the water. So, the tap water tank is within feet of the lavatory waste, for one. Yes, the water you wash your hands with and the water you drink in your coffee and tea all come from the same place. Maybe you should shell out the $20 for the expensive coffee from the airport Starbucks. It will be a heck of a lot cleaner. Here's a little tip. If the flight attendants don't drink the water, you shouldn't either. At whatever cost, drink bottled water. But some flight attendants have also admitted that they will fill empty water bottles with the plane's tap water. Also, the tanks are usually as old as the plane, and they don't get cleaned regularly, if at all. Hey, while we're at it, let's ruin ice for you as well. The ice trays don't get cleaned either, so when you're getting your beverage, ask for no ice. If you're thinking about all those times you've drank the water on the plane, thank your lucky stars you're still alive and functioning. Plus, you might have to give a high five to your immune system. The Environmental Protection Agency had a field day testing the waters. The result? Airplane tap water is a lot filthier than regular tap water. Cheers! No one's safe. You might have heard rumors about how sitting in the back of the plane is safer, or that the middle seat will save you from imminent death during a plane crash. Well, I hate to burst your bubble, but no section of the plane is guaranteed to save your life. But there are sections that aren't as dangerous as others. For example, the front third of the plane has a fatality rate of 38%. That means all those snobs in first class are the first to go. The middle third has a fatality rate of 39%, and the back third is 32%. Okay, maybe the back of the plane could be a lot safer, but what happens if something knocks out the tail of the plane? Then you're royally screwed, and not in a good way. If you're determined to survive a plane crash, according to studies, most fatalities happen because people don't get out of the plane soon enough before it explodes, submerges in water, or etc. So you'll want to sit near an exit to have the highest rate of survival. But do you know what flight attendants won't tell you? They're probably safer than all y'alls. Why? Their jump seat comes with more belts and are built differently. Hey, in the event of a crash, you want the flight attendants to survive so they can tell you what to do. Or do you actually pay attention to that safety presentation before the flight? If so, you get a gold star. Oxygen masks. Speaking of paying attention to those safety demonstrations, you know that part where it says to put on your own oxygen mask first before helping others? There's a reason for that. Sure, you might want to put the mask on your kids first before your own so you save their lives. But you're actually doing a disservice to both of you. When the cabin pressure drops, you only have about 30 seconds to get your mask on before you pass out. And you won't pass out into dreamland, so even if you manage to get a mask on your kid, you better pray to your deity that they can help you get your mask on. Otherwise, your kid might end up an orphan, and you'll miss out on doing the most epic Bane impression the friendly Scars has ever seen. But since we're talking about those oxygen masks, did you know that they actually don't have oxygen in them? What in the world are we breathing? It's usually a combination of sodium perchlorate and an iron oxide. When the mask drops, the chemicals mix together to create breathable air. They do produce a burning smell and a lot of heat, which is totally not comforting in the midst of a potential plane disaster. Finally, those masks only have about 12 to 20 minutes of air, which is usually, at least we hope, enough time for the pilot to bring the plane down to an altitude that has enough oxygen. Powerful Pilot If you've ever wanted to feel like God, then maybe you should look into becoming a pilot. When you're behind the helm, much like the captain of a ship, you have the power! You can kick people off a plane at your discretion. But with great power comes great responsibility. Did you know that pilots can work 16 hours without having a break? Can you imagine being at your own job for that long? So, when that happens, pilots often fall asleep on their flights. Now, before you write angry hate mail to your local airline, don't come out of your bridge just yet, troll. Planes have an autopilot mode, and there is usually a co-pilot to man the controls while the pilot takes a snooze. Pilots have the ability to kick you off the plane as well as handcuff and hand you off to the police as soon as you land. Pilots can also write fines, and they can even take the last will and testament of a dying passenger. This all sounds like an intriguing game of Clue, but this is all very telling as to how much power a pilot beholds. Food You won't find airline food at the top of anyone's preferences, but there's a reason why it tastes so bland. When you're at an altitude of 35,000 feet, your taste buds and sense of smell are the first to go. And sadly, that's what you need to enjoy food. 
Can you imagine going through life unable to enjoy food? Actually, I would probably make better food choices when a carrot and a cupcake taste the same. Anyway, there's that. Did you know that the pilot and the co-pilot are served separately and they aren't allowed to share food? Personally, I'm not the sharing type of guy, so this would be a perfect arrangement for me. But why such a strict rule? Well, there's a chance that the food can make a person sick with food poisoning, and keeping the pilot's meal separate is the best way to avoid poisoning the two people who know how to fly the plane. It sounds like the plot to an action movie, doesn't it? However, flight attendants aren't a fan of the food and most of them won't eat it. What does that tell you? On that note, if you really want to bribe a flight attendant and get some nice perks, bring them real food or even candy. They'll love you for it. Interactions Let's dim the lights and put on some romantic music, because we're going to talk about a curiosity we've all had. Do pilots and flight attendants have relations? Simply put, yes, it happens a lot. When you're traveling all over the world and away from home, we humans seek to have that company and comfort at some point. While some flight attendants may get taken out on dates by mysteriously rich people they meet in hotel bars and even passengers. Looking for a date? If you're willing to risk humiliation and possible airline banishment, you can try your hand at taking out that lovely flight attendant who gave you extra peanuts. Unfortunately, there are flight attendants and pilots who have spouses and families waiting for them at home. And that's pretty gross. The people who do that are clearly trying to live by the unrealistic zip code rule. Groups of pilots' wives have actually tried to get the airlines to book different hotels for the pilots and flight attendants so that these interactions can be avoided. But in all honesty, if the cheating spouse wants it bad enough, it'll happen eventually. Before you go around thinking your plane is a brothel, there are other things you should be more concerned about than the bedroom play of your flight crew. Cleanliness While we know that planes can get cleaned regularly, you need to look into just how efficiently they're cleaned. We'll start you off gently. While flying, you might have requested a pillow and blanket during your cross-country flight through North America. Pretty reasonable, right? Then the flight attendant brings you what you requested in a nice plastic covering. You're the first to use that blanket, right? Wrong! Time to shatter that dream! Most of the time, cleaning crews just put used blankets and pillows back into the plastic wrap. One flight attendant confessed that she only saw a legit fresh set of blankets on the first flight of the day, and that was it. Also, do you like to spread your food out on the tray table? You're probably covering your food in feces. Parents will often change their baby's diaper on the tray table because they don't want to go use the small lavatory and don't wipe everything up. We hate to burst your bubble, but those tray tables aren't cleaned as often as they should be. So you're going to want to give your tray table a good wiping with some hand sanitizer before you decide to draw out little happy faces with your peanuts or roll your food around on the table. But why would you do that anyway, weirdo? Dimming During takeoff and landing of a flight, you've probably noticed that the cabin lights will dim before they turn back on. Why? Is the pilot setting the mood for mischief? Do the airline companies want to make it look like they have track lighting? Because I remember what the movie Steel Magnolia says about men who have track lighting. But dimming the lights isn't for fashion purposes. It also isn't to reduce light pollution, unlike the popular misconception that's believed by a lot of dim people. Takeoff and landing are the two most dangerous parts of a flight, and if a disaster was going to happen, it would be during that time. One, the emergency path lighting and the exit signs can be better seen. Two, if something happens, the interior lights are the first to go. If you're taking a night flight, that means the cabin will go dark instantly. This is bad, especially if you're afraid of the dark. Where's my teddy bear? So the cabin lights are dimmed so that your eyes can adjust to the light changes and you won't be blind when the lights go out. That means you'll have a better chance of finding the exit through the smoke and darkness. Well, isn't that the perfect setup for a scary movie? HR When you hear the word HR, you might be thinking they're talking about human resources. Well, in terms of the airline, you're only half right. If you hear any of the flight crew say HR or you hear it on the radio, that means you have human remains on the plane. No, it doesn't mean your flight is cursed and you're destined to join that body in the afterlife, haunting whatever flight you ended up on. If that were truly the case, then you'd need to contact a ghost hunter like Zach Baggins. With so many people crossing over the afterlife these days, many people would rather be buried someplace else. That's where air travel comes into play. Usually, the bodies are kept in a long wooden box meant to look discreet. Yeah, the untrained eye might just see an oddly shaped box while the crew knows what's up. Also, there's a good chance you've flown in an airplane with body parts right below you. In the wondrous world of donations and transplants, sometimes the body part needs to be transported via plane so it gets to its recipient in time. If you ever see a cooler in the overhead bin, then you're flying high with organs. Isn't that gnarly? Tiny hole. As you've looked out the window while flying at 35,000 feet, you've probably noticed a tiny little hole at the bottom of your window. But if you try to touch it, you can't. That tiny hole is on a different window pane than the one closest to you. What is that tiny hole? Why is it there? 
What purpose does it serve? Will it cause the plane to crash? These are all sensible questions, and I shall give you a sensible answer, my dear Watson. You've probably noticed that a snowflake forms around that tiny hole sometimes, and while that isn't Elsa trying to let it go, there is an explanation. That tiny hole is called a breather hole, or a bleed hole. Hey, stop laughing. That isn't a metaphor for dirty stuff. The bleed hole is an important safety function. There are actually three different windows, and they're mainly made of acrylic. The window on the outside is made to withstand the pressure changes of flying. The bleed hole helps the middle window withstand the pressure changes. If the outside window broke, you would still have the middle window to protect you. Also, if you've gone face to face with the bleed hole and felt air, don't worry, it's not outside air. Well, that was a smooth landing, right? If you enjoyed this video, then tell me. Just like flight attendants, we need positive encouragement from time to time. Leave your thoughts in the comments below, and before you leave the plane, take a moment to be sure you subscribe to our channel. We hope you enjoyed your flight.